Hey, welcome. Thanks for joining me as we are looking this week at the problem of the cross. We've looked at the promise or the uh, prophecy of the cross. Uh, we've looked at the person of the cross. And this week we're looking at the problem of the cross. And there is a problem with the cross. Uh, and we'll talk about that in just a minute. Uh, this is all, of course, talking about crucified, the person and power of the cross. And we're going to finish up on the power of the cross. And then we go to the victory of Christ in the uh, in the empty tomb. So this week we're looking at, and there are several places we could go where Paul deals with this, uh, the, the puzzle or the problem of the cross or the difficulty of the cross. Uh, but I'm looking at 1 Corinthians 1, 17 through um, 31. It actually goes farther than that uh, into chapter 2, probably. I mean, it's sort of like the theme of the thing. But um, for our purposes, we're looking at 17 through 31. And we're only looking at verses 17 through 20 uh, today. We're going to break it up into three sections, uh, a little easier to chew on that way. And, uh, of course, the, the, the comparison there is Paul doesn't speak eloquently. He doesn't use the rhetorical devices of, of these suave speakers and convincing speakers. And, 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 so, and, so, and, and you have to understand that when Paul comes in and he's talking about this this new, he's a proclaimer of good news. And what is that good news? Well, the good news is, dear friend, uh, that there is a, a Savior and that uh, God loves you and he has sent his son, Jesus Christ, uh, to die for you and to rescue you from sin and death and to, uh, and to deliver you into a new life, eternal life. And, oh, really? Well, let's hear more about that. Well, uh, he's a crucified Messiah, crucified, crucified. Well, that makes no sense whatsoever. Who in the world ever heard of a uh, of, uh, of of a savior being crucified? It makes no sense. That's horrible. And crucified is uh, that's, that's that's disgusting. That's horrible. That's the thing you hide your eyes from. You don't want to see that. That's disgusting. And then and then what? what you know, tell me more about this person you say was crucified. Well, uh, he's a, a Jew, and oh my goodness, of a despised race because the Jewish people were a despised race in, in the Greco-Roman culture because they were considered really bizarre and weird uh, because they were monotheistic. They said there's only one God. We don't have images of our God, that kind of thing. It was like, wow, that's weird. That's crazy. Uh, and and his, he is the Lord. And well, we know about lords because Caesar is Lord. We know all about that. So it, it, was, a, it was a problematic thing. And Paul is proclaiming this uh, gloriously. Uh, and and it seems foolish. I, I, and I, it's hard for us. It's hard for me to imagine how foolish that really sounds, how actually utterly void of sense that sounds because I've grown up believing in Christ. I, I, I grew up in a house that believed in the crucified Messiah. Uh, I, I have grown up believing that Jesus is the returning King. I have grown up knowing these things. I came to faith in Christ. When I was nine years old, made my public, public profession in Christ. Um, uh, love, love the Lord and believe it with all of my heart. So it's difficult for me to put myself in a position of an adult or teenager listening to crucified Messiah, Jew, resurrected, coming back to life. Everybody knows nobody goes back to life like that. It's only in movies. That kind of weird thing. Uh, and, and Paul is talking about that. And he says, For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not in cleverness of speech, um, uh, not in uh, uh, the word that is used there, Sophia Logu, uh, uh, smart words, wise words, that the cross of Christ should not be made void, emptied. For the word of the cross is to those who are perishing foolishness, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and the cleverness of the clever I will set aside. Where is the wise man? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? A um, couple of things. Uh, he, Paul, made it a point not to use some convincing rhetorical system in proclaiming the good news of Jesus Christ. Later on, he's going to say, I think it's in verse 23, we preach Christ crucified. 
uh, the crucified Christ, the crucified and resurrected Christ. We, that's what we preach. We preach him crucified and resurrected. Other places, Paul said that Jesus becomes the curse for us. When cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree, he becomes our curse. He who knew no sin becomes sin on our behalf. Um, and so it, it is that, that seems foolish. That seems foolish. How could this Jew, um, this Palestinian, not Palestinian, but uh, 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 Galilean Jew uh, who is crucified by Rome, uh, dead and buried, new claim resurrected. Uh, how can that be? How can he be a savior? How can that be? And Paul is going to compare and contrast two different two different things. Those of this present evil age, because Paul knows of two ages, two two groups. Those who are in the present evil age, those who've been rescued out of this present evil age, and he sees that the new age started in Christ's resurrection. So you have the new age and the old age overlapping. You have them coexisting. The new age has begun in Christ. That is still going. You have this old evil age that is still going as well uh, until uh, the fullness of the Gentiles is brought in, as Scripture says. And so he's, he has determined not to use some rhetorical system of convincing people with clever speech, but rather letting the word of the cross be spoken and just letting people uh, be won over by the power of the cross. Uh, of course, by the Holy Spirit revealing the truth, convicting of the truth of the cross of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the good news of Christ, that in him uh, sin and death is defeated at the cross. And so he, he says, I, I didn't use convincing uh, rhetoric uh, that the cross of Christ should made, be made empty. And in other words, Paul sees that the, crucified, the preaching of Christ crucified is power in and of itself, and that the Spirit of God will, will convince someone of the truth that in his death on the cross is the death of, of sin uh, and death. And the, the proof of that is his resurrection from the grave. Um, for the word of the cross is to those who are perishing foolishness. Um, but to us who are being saved is the power of God. And there's two groups there. Those who are being rescued out of this age and those who are God rejecting and in this age. And he would include... Uh, Jews in this in, in the old evil age as well. Uh, it's not just Jew and Gentile. Well, that's a category Paul can use. The category he's using here is those who are of the old age or the this present evil age and the new age which has begun in Christ. And if you are in that age, your the wisdom that you use for that age is is worthless. It's perishing. It is no good. Um, it is foolishness because the new age has begun and there is the power and the wisdom of God and all who are being saved out of that uh, are believe and know this is the power of God for salvation because we're made alive again. We are delivered from sin and death and we are brought into a, a right ordered life and a right ordered uh, relationship with God. And then Paul quotes uh, Isaiah 29, 14 to go along with that. Therefore, behold, I will once again deal marvelously with this people, wondrously marvelously, and the wisdom of their wise men shall perish, and the discernment of their discerning men shall be concealed uh, or done away with. And that's what he says, for it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and the cleverness of the clever I will set aside. And so he backs up what he's saying. For the word of the cross is to those who are perishing foolishness. It, it seems ridiculous. It seems, and how can that be? But to those who are being saved, those who have been convinced of the truth of who Jesus is by the Holy Spirit and have believed in Christ, his finished work on the cross, believed that that del delivers us from our debt of sin and the death we owe and that we are given eternal life and forgiveness of sin in that, if we if we are being rescued out of that, we're in the process of being rescued out of that. We're not perfect. We're not there yet, but we're being rescued out of it. And those who are uh, of this old age, this old evil, present evil age, I say old age compared to the new age, but it's the present evil age um, that is still uh, going concomitantly with, with the new age uh, begun in Christ, where there are different categories uh, you are in Christ, and therefore you are rightly ordered. You are on your way, the sanctification, justification, all of that. Uh, you're on your way to being made like Christ. If you are of this 
present evil age, this old age, then you are condemned. You're perishing. And the ideas that go along with that age are perishing with it. So if you are in that age, then it is just a foregone conclusion. You are perishing. And the cross seems like foolishness. But if you are born again, then the cross is the power of God to deliver you from sin and death. Um, so, and he finishes up with... Um, um, Where is the wise man? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? And he, he talks more about that in Romans. Let me read this to you. Romans 1, 18 through uh, 23 is where he talks about uh, our, the, those who don't know God, those who are perishing, those who are in this present evil age rather than transferred into the kingdom of, of his son. Uh, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth and unrighteousness. Of course, the truth being uh, Jesus Christ. Because that which is known about God is evident within them, for God made it evident to them. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes, his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood through what has been made, so that they are without excuse. For even though they knew God, they did not honor God as God or give thanks, but they became futile in their speculations. And their foolish heart was dark, and professing to be wise, they became fools. Exchanged the glory of the incorruptible God for an image in the form of corruptible man, and of birds and four-footed animals and crawling creatures." Um, so those who claim to be wise become fools. Uh, those who claim they know it and the so-called wise people of this God rejecting age or of this world, um, ultimately reveal themselves to be fools, uh, because the, the, the power of God, the wisdom of God is seen in this foolish thing, uh, the cross, uh, who would have thought the cross would be the way that people are delivered from sin and death? But that is the truth. And so uh, that's the first few verses that we're looking at. Uh, it is the wisdom of God against the, it's the, what is called the foolishness or the folly of God against the wisdom of God rejecting man, uh, of Christ rejecting humanity, let me put it that way. And, and so that's what we're looking at. And Paul is going to bring this to, to a conclusion. This, how can this be? This, this problem of the cross, a stumbling block uh, uh, to Jews and foolishness to, to Gentiles. Um, it's a scandal. It's scandalous. It causes people to, oh, how can this be? That kind of thing. And so that's the problem of the cross, this crucified Messiah. And what in the world good does that do? And how, how in the world is somebody being crucified on a cross do anything for me? And that's what this question is. That's the problem. That's the problem to deal with. Uh, it is a glorious thing. Uh, this horrible, horrible thing that took place on the cross uh, it brings glory to God the Father. Uh, it saves humanity. Uh, and as Christ is lifted up, uh, so he will draw all to himself. So we're looking at the problem of the cross. I pray that you know that, that Jesus goes to the cross because he loves you. Uh, for God so loved the world, gave his only begotten son. Uh, whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. He loves you, and he wants to save you. Uh, and the cross is the only way by which we can be saved. So I pray that you know that, my friend. I pray that you know that God loves you so much he gave his son. You might have forgiveness of sin, eternal life. Joy indescribable right here and right now. I pray that that is yours. I pray that you know the gift of salvation that is yours in Christ Jesus. Because if you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, he has another gift he wants to give you, and that's his shalom, his peace. The Prince of Peace wants to grant that peace to you. And I pray that you are at peace, at peace here in your heart, at peace with God, at peace with your fellow human beings. You can be in peace, resting assured that God is in control and working all things out for your good, for those who love the Lord. Well, until we meet again, I pray that that peace rests upon you, your family, your friends, your loved ones, your home, now and always. Till we meet again tomorrow, uh, shalom, my friend.